What's up guys, Ryan Knows Tech here today from techinform.us and today another request video on the table and today it's about uh, another doc tour. I don't know what's up with these, I get lots of requests about them so I try to do them relatively easy and watched a few and they're actually kind of interesting. You find some new applications about your Mac. So uh, first things first, my doc is pretty big. A lot of people comment, why is your doc so long? If you look at Apple's MacBook Pro boxes or, or what they demonstrate as the typical dock, it's about twice as high as this and about half as full. Well, I like to keep every application that I need in a month or so. Um, not the ones that I use 20 times a day because then once a week, once a day even, I might have to go and index one manually and I'd rather just have it all down there. So I don't use everything here every day. I don't use everything every month, but everything I will use at some point. So uh, everything in here has a purpose. It's not just, oh, that looks good down there. Let's drag it in there. Start off with Finder. Finder's pretty standard. Uh, I don't even think you can drag it out. But there's Finder, obviously a, a, a default uh, browser here equivalent to um, Explorer on the Windows side to be able to browse your hard drive, locate files, anything, uh, anything there. Indexing, I use the standard indexing tool built into OS X. I've had people ask me that. The dashboard. I'll be honest, I rarely click the dashboard here unless I am only have access to a mouse. I usually just use the button on the top of my keyboard. But in my dashboard, we'll take a quick look at that. You can see I only have a few gadgets. And since I keep switching displays, they're kind of all over the place. But uh, I use the iStat Pro. I think it's free. It's a nice app. Tells me my battery health's on 90%. Looks like it might be time to do a... Uh, a reset on that. I'm getting about nine hours and 35 minutes on that 90%, so I haven't had any problems with that. CPU usage, memory, nice nice little gadget there. Dictionary, actually quite useful. You can change the language here. It's a real nice, um, real nice dictionary. Google search, don't use that a whole lot, but uh, if I do only have access to a keyboard, and that's super easy too. Um, stocks, not looking too good today. A calendar, and then the weather for Hudson here. You can see it looks pretty abysmal till uh, Friday or Thursday and then in the weekend. Um, next up's my default web browser. I use Safari. I use Safari for a few reasons. One, it isn't Chrome. I love Chrome in Windows. I really don't love Chrome in OS X for some reason. It just seems slower. It takes longer to load web pages. It takes longer to launch Safari itself. So I found a lot of luck in using Safari. It just seems to be much quicker. I like the way the bookmarks are organized. Um, it just looks like a, a better browser to me. And, it's not always fast, but what it is, it's uh, it's nice. So I use Safari uh, predominantly. With Google Chrome, you'll see I have that down there. That's kind of my secondary web browser, and I'll use that to answer questions on my old YouTube channel, so I don't have to constantly sign in and out of mail accounts and uh, and all that information and YouTube accounts. So I just keep everything kind of my Ryan knows tech stuff in Safari and my James R. Schultz the old stuff and email in Chrome when I have to iTunes 10, we're pretty familiar with that. Use that for my music, syncing, listen to music all the time, love it. Address book, probably shouldn't open that for privacy. I don't know if I have anything in it. But uh, address book, I use on occasion really just to sync my iPhone and my iPad too. Um, I think it's a really nice way of, of having a calendar and address book, or address book, not calendar. But it's just a nice nice application. I know there's other ones out there that do, that do more, but why? Speaking of calendars, here's iCal. I use that. You can say I don't schedule events, but if I ever do need uh, to, to schedule an event or a date or anything, I can separate home from work on the Mac, and then that syncs through MobileMe, so that's real nice as well. Don't use that a whole lot, though. Mail, I rarely use mail. It's another uh, way for me to get into my business mail. I usually just use the web mail. So that, I'll be honest, that could probably be something I could drag out, but I leave it there because I do use it on occasion if I have a browser that's busy uploading something and I don't want to mess with it. Photo booth, um, my camera's in use so I can't open it right now. But if I ever do need to take some quick pictures or mess around with the video, I've occasionally used that for YouTube videos, but not much since I got ScreenFlow. Another nice application. Now we have uh, iLife here. We have iWeb. I use that for more, more demos than making actual websites, but I have made a few websites for people. iPhoto, love iPhoto. Really nice way of organizing photos and, and everything together. I, I love iPhoto. iMovie, vlogs. I edit my vlogs here. Unless I do something super quick on the iPhone, I just upload it from there. Anything else is done on iMovie because it's relatively fast and easy. If you don't know, my vlog channel is youtube.com slash jrsblog. Link is down below. GarageBand, podcasts, audio recordings. If I want to mess with some instruments, you just saw the all the iWork stuff. Didn't actually mean to open that, but there is uh, 
uh, GarageBand. I'll use that on occasion. Aperture. I actually bought Aperture. Aperture is a really nice suite <laughs> of um, of applications or uh, of I guess uh, photo editing because there's so many options and it's really so easy. Um, Nice little Apple fail here. But I do really like Aperture because it's so easy uh, and it definitely does a better job than iPhoto or uh, Photoshop because it's easier. So Aperture's worth it. Time Machine, I have a 500 gig Western Digital Scorpio hard drive that I bought for backups. I probably back up once every 100 days, which is not often enough, but it takes four hours to back up 150 gigs. So um, I do use Time Machine probably every three to four months. Then I use Pages Keynote Numbers, which is part of the iWork suite. Um, definitely like the iWork suite. I think I did a review. If not, maybe I'll make one soon. Let me let me know in the comments if you'd like to see one. Um, nice thing about Pages and everything is it's super easy and it is compatible. A lot of people say if I buy a Mac, I need Word. No, Mac or Word for Mac, at least the latest 2008 edition. I hate. I hate Microsoft Office for Mac. iWork. It's just really visually appealing, and it's really easy to use. It's not all about visual appeal. There's a lot of um, the, a lot of the factor is is how it works, how easy it is to implement stuff. And I, I definitely like this over Word 2008 for Mac. I do think that Word 2010 for PC does a lot more, but arguably it's a little bit harder to do. I'm not saying it's hard, but it's harder. Same thing with Keynote and Numbers. Uh, the equivalent uh, Keynote would be your uh, PowerPoint, Numbers, Excel, and then Pages, obviously Microsoft Word. Google Earth, uh, kind of fun. The flight simulation, I think it's whatever they call their flight simulation on there, is, is nice. It's not as good as X-Plane or um, FSX Flight Simulator 10 or anything like that. But it is, uh, nevertheless, good mapping software. Of course, maps.google.com is better because you have Word's eye view. But as far as on disk, that would be my Maps application. Final Cut Pro, a lot of people don't know I have this. I bought the suite, guys, all right? Every time I mention this, oh, I guarantee you downloaded it illegally. Guess what? I didn't, all right? Um, so, obviously, that's not something that, uh, that just isn't my thing. You know, I used to get Windows illegally. I'd have problems with that. So, Final Cut Pro is something that I ordered. The whole Final Cut suite is really a nice suite of applications. Uh, I don't use it. A couple reasons I don't use it. I haven't had the time to learn it yet. I mentioned in my last one of my last videos that it was difficult, and it is difficult compared to iMovie. It is not something that's unlearnable, especially for any tech enthusiast. So I just need to find time to sit down, play with it, and I will start using that in the future. This machine is more than capable enough to to export uh, 720 to 1080p videos. I've done it before. Next is Motion. Motion. I was going to start making intros in. All this stuff happened around here. I haven't had a, a whole lot of time to do that. So this whole suite here, the DVD Studio Pro, Color, Motion, and um, Final Cut should be over here, uh, is a suite that I haven't had a whole lot of time to work with yet, uh, in, including, uh, I forgot these, Cinema Tools, Compressor, and, and uh, Soundtrack Pro. But all of those tools I am going to start messing around with this winter when I have time, and, and we'll see some work with that in the future. Team Viewer. A lot of people don't know what Team Viewer is. This is very easy to open up an application on both computers. So this one, let's say uh, my MacBook Pro and my ThinkPad here, which I do a lot overnight if I need to upload a big file. I'll stick this down here, leave it on, plug it in, mute the speakers, whatever, open up Team Viewer, type in my code, and I can connect from my MacBook Pro upstairs or halfway around the world and control it. Uh, just controlling the VNC, I think it's called. So. That is very, very convenient if I need to upload a file overnight. I'm up in my room. I don't want to come down here and start the upload overnight. So nice to be able to control a, a local machine from somewhere very unlocal. TweetDeck is my primary Twitter uh, client. I know a lot of people, uh, Twitter, TweetDeck is kind of like that love it, hate it situation. You either love it or you hate it. And I'm one of the users that, uh, that loves it. I really think that TweetDeck organizes this really well. It's super easy to come up here change which account you want to tweet from, both, none, one. Um, see everything here, all that's customizable, free. I really like TweetDeck. I haven't really tried any other ones. If you use TweetDeck and you can recommend a better one, leave in the comments below and I'll probably try it out. Photoshop, another program that I paid for, okay? This is Adobe Photoshop CS4 Extended. Nice application. I really like the, um, well, it's it's Photoshop. I really don't think anything else compares as far as to the, the broadness of use that 
Photoshop gets. You know, Command N, new document, set it up. It's it's easy, and at the same time, there's so much crap in it that you never really need, but it's there. So really nice application, and definitely worth the money I invested into it. Activity monitor, I leave this here because I kind of like to come over here and see that I'm only... I have uh, five and a half gigabytes of RAM left. That's still ridiculous that I'm using 2.45. But uh, nice to be able to come in here, kill your processors if something goes wrong. So obviously that's there. System preferences, another another uh, thing that you kind of need. I go in here occasionally, change your desktop background, resolutions for your display, speech settings, standard like control panel. And then Skype and ADM. I use those two instead of uh, um, other other applications because they're just... They just work. Most of the other applications, like AIM's app for AIM, if anybody still uses that, is garbage. At least it was when I first got my Mac in January. I don't know what it is now. But ADM, I love the I love the way it brings in Google Talk and Yahoo or um, AIM, puts them together. I think Yahoo too, and it's all there in one window in one application. Skype, I don't know if we can bring in Skype too, but Skype's nice. We all know what Skype is: Voice over IP. Now I have uh, on this side of the dock, I have an airport drive mapped. This is nice. I can, well, when I'm logged in, I can go into that file, drag stuff, and then come anywhere else on my network and copy those files instead of using a flash drive or something like that. Nice and easy to push it through a network. It's all 802.11n, so it's pretty fast. Next up, I have a file called MacBook Pro. This is where I just keep files instead of in documents, better way to organize it. So here's, I have a wallpaper folder, going to transportation. I say transportation because I've got cars, planes, all kinds of stuff in here, high resolution wallpapers, um, just the way I organize my file system. Applications, obviously here's all the applications. If you see anything interesting you want to review, leave a comment. I don't use all these, there's probably a lot more I could use in the recommendations, of course, leave a comment. And then over here is uh, is your, your uh, documents or downloads folder, which I try to clear out pretty often, it wastes a lot of space. I don't download all that much, but when I do, I do have it set to download to downloads. There's my doc. I pretty much use all that. This is fall 2010. Thanks for watching. If, uh, if you have anything that I missed, you'd like to see more, you have recommendations, drop me a comment below. I'll definitely read that and, uh, and talk about it in an upcoming video. So thanks for watching this one. Our website, again, is techinform.us. My Twitter is twitter.com slash James R. Schultz. And tomorrow night, t Tuesday night, is uh, we host our live web shows, if you don't know. Tuesday night from 7 to 9 p.m. Eastern time on ustream.tv slash user slash techinformus. So I'll see you there or in, uh, that'd be tomorrow's Tuesday's video. Bye, guys.